I'm Gwyneth Price Panos. I'm the wig designer and makeup artist for Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. You may be wondering where I am. What is all this stuff? Well, we're currently in the rehearsal space for South Bay Music Theater. There's a rehearsal going on right now. Hopefully, I'm not being too disruptive. But behind me, we see a bunch of props, and here's one of the wigs that's going to be worn by the character Phoebe in the show. In the original Broadway production of Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder, they had it take place in the Victorian era. We're not doing that. We're having it take place in the Edwardian era, which is the early 1900s. And the main difference with hair was it was a lot bigger, a lot poofier, less smooth. And some of the styles that are popular for that time are the Gibson Girl, for example, if you've heard of that. And it's all about volume. And even when people didn't have a lot of hair, they would actually take fake hair and they'd wrap it up and they'd stuff their hair with it to make their hair look even fuller. So we're going to do that. We're going for big hair. So far, I have about 14 wigs for this show. The majority of them are for women and they will be in these big poofy styles. Here's an example of one with a lot of volume on top. Um, but we actually have a few other wigs for different time periods because there is a scene, I don't want to give away too many details, but there is a scene where there's portraits on the wall of people in a variety of time periods. I try to find historically accurate images, but then after I do that, I like to look at what other movies and plays from that time period have used. And I use Pinterest a lot, and I make boards of inspiration that excites me. So the majority of the wigs I have are female wigs for the female principals and players, which are the ensemble, that take place in the Edwardian era. We do have some surprise wigs from some other time periods, including like the 1600s and the 1700s and whatnot, but you'll find out about those when you come see the show. For the men, I'm not actually styling their physical hair, but I do provide them with images from that time period to inspire them to show their hairdressers to get an appropriate haircut for that time period. And they'll, of course, be applying hair product to themselves and combing it themselves. Sometimes when I'm doing a show, a big part of men's styling is the facial hair, and I provide them with glue on facial hair. For this production, it looks like we're only gonna be using one set of sideburns. But who knows what will happen during tech week, there's always a surprise. Can we throw in a mustache here? And I generally am able to help accommodate them. What I personally love about Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder is the snarky sophistication and the comedy. There's a lot of different types of comedy. You know, there's the slapstick and the quirky stuff. But in this, there's a tongue-in-cheek, uh, Gilbert and Sullivan-esque ness to it except I think it's more geared towards modern audiences and definitely has a lot of modern humor that you wouldn't have seen in some of the older shows and we have a stellar cast I'm really excited about them we have a great director I really love working with Walter because I feel like he's one of those people who he likes to accumulate creative people and he likes to see what they have to offer but he also has a vision and he's a perfectionist and I really respect and appreciate directors who don't settle for less than they should. And they always want it to be the best production can possibly be. And even the day before the show opens, you're still getting notes on ways to make things better. And it makes for a great show. So I'm really excited about this one. Besides the cast and the crew and the tech aspects, the script itself is hilarious and the music is great. And I think all audiences would enjoy it. It's fun, dark humor. Who doesn't like that, right? Thank you.